What's up guys? Welcome to Life of Acro. I'm Acro Brandon and this is my life. Guess what I got? Batteries. Lots of batteries. <laughs> jokes aside, I've got 60 batteries right here. We're actually going to be talking about the Lito Kala 21 700 cell. I'm doing it for science, yes, but worst case scenario, I can always take this pack that I'm about to build and throw it in my e-bike that I use for deliveries so it won't actually go to waste. Uh, initially, uh, I have tested these already. I went through and tested the entire batch. So what I'm going to be building, uh, well, what I'm hoping to build is a 12S 5P battery, uh, which will give me 20 amp hours of range. Um, I went through, I've already tested all of them. The voltage is pretty consistent across the board. None of them going over 3.5 volts. Uh, on the low side, 3.43, and typically ranging up to 3.49, so we're only off by six hundredths of a volt, depending on which one we got there. So that's not too bad of a variation. As I go back and build the pack, I'll start putting them a little bit closer to their respective ranges. That way, before once I do the final assembly, I can go back and charge each group up and get everything nice and level before letting the BMS get to work and do its thing. But we're in a pretty close range. So, so far, so good. Uh, I am going to do a high discharge test. I've got a couple uh, resistors coming. Those haven't showed up yet. Uh, but so far I've been using my IMAX B6. I did one test already where I charged one up and I'm currently in the discharge phase. I am discharging a battery right now and testing it. Uh, I already charged it up fully. Now I'm discharging it at one amp. It's slow as molasses. So it timed out once after the two hour mark, but we uh, discharged about two mil 2,000 milliamps, two amp hours. Right now it's still going. I have another hour's worth of left there. We're at 3.28 volts under load with uh, 1,300 milliamps discharged as of right now. So we're right at 3,300 milliamps. So we're right on pace to get to the 4,000 milliamps, okay? This is a bigger cell to be expected than a Samsung 30Q or a regular 18650 format, which looks something like this. Uh, don't mind my dirty cell. This is just a salvage cell from a different pack, but in still a good shape. So you can see, right, this one's just a little bit higher with an 18650, uh, 65 millimeters versus 70. Uh, and then on the tip right there, God damn it. Fucking cuckoo clock is always ruining my life. My girlfriend goes to Switzerland once and comes back with a cheap ass cuckoo clock. We gotta hang it up for memories and it's always going off during my videos and I usually edit it out. Fucker thing. Anyways, back to where I was at, right? And then right here, the 18 or the 21, right? Meaning the uh, diameter of the cell itself. So it's gonna be a little bit bigger here uh, on the 21700. Now for a little bit of techno babble, just moving the cells aside, right? 21 millimeters is supposed to be the diameter of the cell. This comes in perfectly at 21.5. And then the length is supposed to be 70 millimeters. And uh, I don't know if they're like counting just the sidewall, just the can of the cell that comes in at 70.7. But if I go right over the center, I don't know if they're counting like you know, the button top, it's not even a button on top, but just the top of it. This actually comes at 71 millimeters. So I don't know if they're just rounding down and saying like, hey, whatever. Okay, with the 18650 on the Samsung 30Q, this bad boy comes in at 18.1. And I have a little uh, ring insulator right on the top. And there's actually some shards from here from peeling off the nickel but this is coming in at 66 millimeters, so still pretty close. I guess give or take a millimeter is uh, the way to average it out. Moving on into the weight class division, this is already published, but we always like to see and check and see what's up. <laughs> this with a little extra silicone, still coming in at 46 grams, which is right about right for a Samsung 30Q, because I think they're supposed to be about 45 to 48 grams. And then this 21700, weighing in at 69 grams. So definitely a little more weight, obviously. Bigger battery, more weight, more size, all of that stuff. So let's talk about the idea and what I have here. So right now on my board behind me, I have a 12S4P. It's with Samsung 30Qs. Uh, I weigh 140 pounds and I ride pretty medium aggressive most of the time, high 20s to 30s when I can, and then obviously slowing it down, but I like carving. 
when I ride this board uh, from a full charge, I get about 10 to 12 aggressive miles. Probably 10 is about right before it hits about 20% of capacity left in the battery and I'm really starting it to feel sag. Uh, so I was hoping that I could try and squeeze these in to my case. I don't know if that's gonna be possible. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the 5P. I was feeling super ambitious and I was like, fine, let's just buy 60 cells instead of 48. So we'll see what happens. But definitely, obviously, since these are longer than an 18650, even the two of these side by side, just touching right now without any spot welds, without any uh, you know wiring or anything like that, is just a little bit wider than my case can accommodate. So the option was, I didn't know if I was gonna do like a double stack, you know, offset, or it's gonna be parallel groups of five, if this was the route that I wanted to go with this, or if I wanted to do groups of five nice and flat, like a flat pack. Now, it is possible for me to have five of these connected, nice and flat like this, and this will fit inside the case, so maybe I could do, um, you know, 12 S5P with it being fat, flat, bring it down here, six, do another stack of six right on top and it might work just right and fit in there. I'm gonna have to test fit and see. The other option is to be a little more conservative, right? And just go for the 12 S 4P, whether it's like this or this, right? And then I could have two side by side going all the way down and that might fit. I don't know until I crack open this case to test fit it, but I will put a little bit of video in there for you when I get to that point. Worst case scenario, I just build a standard brick and uh, build a mountain board with a top mount box or some kind of board where I put this in the case where it's a top mount case, which is also an option that I have because as much as I love having this low riding cruiser right here, it does bottom out with the case underneath and having a single stack uh, battery that's you know recessed into the deck and then having a nice slow slow and low enclosure I'm beyond that point so I'm working on but the next video that we're gonna see it's not gonna be today I'm just gonna cut to something else once the resistors come back around we're gonna look at how did this perform how did it heat up and I don't have any special technology like a special infrared camera or anything like that I'm just gonna do it totally ghetto style I'm gonna tape a a thermometer that I have, an electronic thermometer to this, discharge it at a high rate of speed, see what the heat gets to, see what the capacity is like as it discharges, um, and then we'll report on that. We'll also get a little bit of footage of me trying to fit this in the case and then seeing what our next steps are gonna be before I start to actually assemble this battery. And then we're gonna assemble it, do range test, and see how it performs for an e-skate application. Hopefully it goes good. Worst case scenario, like I said, slap it in the e-bike. I'm doing deliveries anyways, and now I have a range monster battery that doesn't need uh, a lot of amp output demands if this thing is a total dud. All right, let's see what happens next.